A Song of the Sea by Marion Longfellow, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The mystic sea is singing its golden song to me. I bend to catch its murmur in silent ecstasy, till as the music ringeth in sweet and solemn tone, an answering echo waketh a music all mine own. The sea sings softly, softly upon my listening ear, and still its notes fall ever in cadence full and clear. The song that waxeth stronger within my beating heart seems but a second measure, seems of the sea a part. And far from all the burdens that the day brings in its train, my soul hath found Elysium, renews its youth again. I hear the golden billows beat on the rock-bound shore, and still my heart is singing that sweet song o'er and o'er. O happy youth, how quickly the sands of life have run! The shades of eve are falling ere yet the day is done. The golden sea eternal beats loud and strong and free, and bears upon its bosom a joy eternally. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Spirit of the Water by Marion Longfellow. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Tis the spirit of the water, it breathes upon the sea, as a phantom in its motions it glides mysteriously. I see the snow clad islands that deck the opal bay, and the spirit of the water now robed in mist and spray. The charm that clings eternal to ocean fills my soul, as mist wreathed waves in grandeur pass on unto their goal. Ye phantoms of life's ocean, how like the mist ye seem, as backward turneth memory across life's glow and gleam. For ye figure forth life's pleasures, its cares, its tears, and pain, and recall with all their glamour youth's joyous dreams again. While still the fateful presence glides across the wave, nor lifts its veil of mystery until we reach the grave. O oh, speak! Is it endeavour, or is it blighted faith? Or is it but the passing of pain, this silent wraith? We know not, oh, we know not here, for o'er life's restless sea we too glide on as phantoms all this side eternity. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. With the Tide by Marion Longfellow, read for LibriVox.org, by Larry Wilson. Calm seas that lie neath summer skies and mirror back those skies to me, upon whose breast white sails arise and glide like spirits grand and free. Calm seas beneath whose hidden deep are wonders far beyond my ken. There, rocked in murmuring currents, sleep the secrets not revealed to men. Peace, like a white-winged dove, descends and hovers o'er the waters bright, while glory of the sunset blends with tones of the approaching night. My glad soul bids thee welcome and goes forth upon the ocean's tide, far from the care that fills the land to where my spirit would abide, till as the cares of day depart and the glad sea its greeting calls, I rise unshackled, strong of heart, and from my life the burden falls. Thus in the quiet nook I find all that I longed and sought in vain. In the world's haunts my soul to bind, and seeking found but grief and pain. Now, like a blessing, falls thy grace, O grand, beloved, glorious sea. Drawn by thy message face to face, my longing greets thy mystery. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Grand Manan by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Grand Manan, 1881 O solemn cliffs of Grand Manan, In silent might you rise, As bounded by the eternal sea And by the azure skies. Like a proud soul that stands apart 
unknown unloved unsought ye guard your stronghold silently through many battles fought the seagull sweeps across your wall and seaward shapes his course while at your feet the waves beat loud in measure wild and hoarse o solemn heights o grand and calm ye hold my heart in thrall and not a sound is heard beyond the ocean's rise and fall but as the waves beat strong and loud upon your rugged shore through it the sea's sad monotone i hear forevermore the sunset glow hath kissed your heights as loath to leave you yet and bathed in glories red and gold the eve and you have met the boat speeds on we may not stay but from my brooding heart your image while this life remains can never more depart end of poem this recording is in the public domain lee ward by marian longfellow read for librivox dot org by sonia lee ward oh for the bounding wave and the salt salt spray on my face for the sweep of the filling sail and its free untrammelled pace for the life that hath no bound to its path but the open sea for the soul as free as air that by right belongs to me for power to cast aside these fetters dark and strong to bound over heaving deep and no more to feel the thong that cuts through the quivering heart and the restless soul as well i yearn for a fuller life with a might i cannot quell oh for the bounding wave and the salt salt spray on my face for the strength to grasp and hold the plan of a waning race for might to compel the tide in its turn to serve my will that my heart of the fountain deep may drink to the brim its fill end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Song in the Evening by Marian Longfellow, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in May 2017. O sweetest bird that ever sang in notes of wild rejoicing, thy even song as first it rang was thrilling in its voicing i felt thy rapture as i heard thy song in all its beauty to me it scarce seemed but a bird twas life and love and duty i could not see thy tiny form as softly close the gloaming and like a wanderer in the storm my heart was blindly roaming while as thy song rang pure and clear o sweet smell of the haying memory sped back through many a year both light and shade displaying and still thy notes of freed like tone came clear o mid and river with tender meaning all its own and trilled and trilled for ever o heart it sang let thine own life become a song to others that thou mayst count them in the strife not alien but as brothers sing on sing on thy notes repeat sing life and love and duty that mystic three whose names replete are ever with heavenly beauty 
beauty sing life the gift of free divine that pierced the gloom of even the first upon our path to shine a heritage of heaven and love oh, what were life without this again gift eternal that bids the glad earth blossom out in summer's garb supernal yet love and life were both in vain were duty not a flower that springs beneath the blessed rain to crown life's darkest hour not unto me a bird that teeth in notes of earth was singing but a pure voice its way did cleave from heaven its message bringing end of poem this recording is in the public domain Meadow Bloom by Marian Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Meadow Bloom My one wee bud that grows in the meadow, Far apart from the flaunting garden blooms, Afar where the brook and birds are singing, And the soft noon haze over the distance looms. My one wee bud, but to grow so bravely, Where the rushes rise from the moorland green, Where birds skim close over the grassy billows, and the low breeze murmurs its plaint between my one wee song i sing in the even when the home doth gather its loved ones close and the worlds afar and hearts grow nearer and the jar of life sinks into repose my one wee song like a flower growing in this life of mine that were else so bare ah shalt thou go forth to do my bidding my love shall he cull it as blossom fair ah flower and song be this thy meaning thy mission of love in the world is clear the grace once born of seed sown in shadow shall bloom in the hearts that now hold thee dear end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Song of the Autumn by Marian Longfellow, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in May 2017. Scarlet and gold and crimson, their banners flung to the breeze, like monarch's brilliant vesture, the ranks of the maple trees golden and brown and russet the oaks in their autumn dress soldiers in ranks deploying to the front the onward press pale in their coats of yellow tinged and with orange flecked the chestnuts on the hillside as with royalty bedecked scarlet and gold and crimson and golden and russet brown pale with a sun-kissed yellow are the leaves now fluttering down garb of the seasons bringing majestic it decks the hills and autumn's lavish splendor the soul with its beauty fills end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Iris by Marian Longfellow, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa, in Belgium, in May 2017. 
Adown the grassy hill they come to greet me every morn, those little maids in Norman caps of joy and springtime born. They march demurely, side by side, how many pair there be. Far as mine eye can reach, their forms in green and white I see. Each sister wears with youthful grace her snowy Norman cap, and in the long procession there I see no pause or gap. And so I watch to see them come as morn by morn I pass, the green of shimmering robe and glint of snow within the grass. They never speak, and yet they nod a friendly greeting there, and all their beauty round me seems a fragrance in the air. I speak to them? Oh, yes, I speak, and lovingly I bid them welcome every summer morn, those maids with downcast lid. They are so modest, pure, and fair. They are so very sweet, I fain would linger there and call them clustering round my feet. Far backward in the view my eyes the slow procession see, and yet they never leave the path, nor can they speak to me. Tis the flag lily growing tall amid the meadow grass, the iris, as we often call each snowy snooded lass. In couple stately, there they stand as far as eye can scan, and round them waves the nodding grass as homage due from man. They stand a line of vessels pure, or each a sweet-faced nun, while on each snowy cap there falls the radiance of the sun. Although the power of speech may not be theirs in worldly phrase, they teach a lesson just as true and just as full of praise. In their allotted path they walk and feel their destined end, their beauty gladdens every eye as down the hill they wend. O oh, flower sisters, if ye make one heart in rapture rise, if ye but waken one pure thought to bloom in paradise, then have your lives, though brief, as boon to mortal men been given, to draw from earth his sordid thoughts and bid them rest on heaven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Liebeslied by Marian Longfellow. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Liebeslied Like a frail shell on the breast of the ocean Sways now my heart to the rhythm of thine Cradled is born on the crest of emotion Sinks in the deep of a languor divine And as the shell the wild waves onward carry So doth thy love bear my heart to its shore Here on its golden sands blissful to tarry Held in thy fond clasp to wander no more Lay thy dear lips to my lips, O my lover. Read in mine eyes all my tongue may not tell. Love, as a bee, gaily sips, gallant rover. Rove thou no more. Nay, I yield to thy spell. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Longing by Marian Longfellow, sang for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in May 2017. Oh, to be out on the ocean where the waves beat wild and free, where there's not twixt the sky and billows, but the boat and you and me where the winds with a touch caress us and the seagulls sweep on high and the bell from its rocky outpost sends forth its warning cry oh to be out on the ocean with the cold salt spray to dash athwart the bows of the vessel and foaming to merrily lash the boat to freer effort as she plunges 
a thrill with life all the crest of the bounding billows and above their surging strife oh to be out on the ocean with no heart twixt you and me with no bond that must bind forever here but strong and brave and free with the song of ground old ocean as it lulls us on its breast with the thought of a perfect union and of perfect love and rest oh to be out on the ocean all those storms rise dark and strong though by wind and by wave through the tempest we sweep our way along till the stars come out in the heavens and the wind has sung to rest and i list to words of comfort as i lean on your faithful breast oh to be out on the ocean and to leave the din and strife to taste but once more of freedom and to drink of the wine of life oh to be out on the ocean where the waves beat wild and free with not twixt the sky and the bellows but the boat and you and me end of poem this recording is in the public domain on the sea the answer by marian longfellow sung for librivox.org by iswa in belgium in may 2017 we are sailing over the crest of the billow afar from the world and its sorrow and pain while i on thy soft breast my head now may pillow and lull me to rest and to peace once again nay love how thy heart in its prison is beating it throbs neath my ear as a fluttering bird while swift to my lips comes thy low song repeating the lilt of the waves in a measure half heard For, oh, to be out on the ocean the ocean and oh to be far from the world love with thee it rises and falls with the waves rhythmic motion is filled with night's balm as with star beams the sea 
with not twixt the sky and the billows now singing the words keep repeating the tender refrain but the boat comes once more in cadence clear ringing twixt the sky and billows i hear it again now save thee and me falls the song in its measure across the wide ocean of dark love from thee and i know to my heart's deep mysterious treasure thy love like a bird flies to harbor with me nay how could we dream that o'er time's trackless ocean thy soul thus responsive should answer to mine or that out of the chalice of silent emotion my heart drink in equal communion with thine end of the poem this recording is in the public domain The Red Rose by Marian Longfellow, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in May 2017. I pin the red rose o'er oh my heart, the rose my lover gave to me, with many vows and tender words, my love, my own. I love but thee. I wore the red rose o oh my heart that summer day with gladness and knew not doubt nor haunting care nor slightest touch of sadness. But ah, a thorns within my heart a thorn of false love's planting the seed had pressed its bitter sting my life for ever haunting i took the red rose from my heart no more o oh love tis blowing the thorn lies deep within my breast whenever sign is showing end of poem this recording is in the public domain the maiden and the boat by marian longfellow read for LibriVox.org by sonia the maiden and the boat a fair little boat went sailing the sea far over the bright blue wave and she dipped and curtsied gay and free as became a craft so brave a blithe young maiden a song of love sang out on the summer air the birds took their notes on their boughs above and answered her cheerily there as the boat went out and over the bar the white sail said to the breeze her clear song followed on pinions afar the birds sang forth from the trees o oh, boat in your path to the rising sun to that land beyond you see pray what is the cargo your journey done you will bear her if fate decree for you take her heart on your snowy deck where love is now high priest 
And you take a trough, may there be no wreck, no tempest out of the east. Will you bring her the perfect love she gave, and keep it unsoiled and true? Will you bring her a heart as strong and brave as the one she gives to you? Else what does it matter if wreck be tied, or the sun go down in cloud? It were better for her this day you died than that love should wear a shroud. It were better for that a song were mute to swell for the later day. For love that hath never a constant root must fade and wither away. So boat sail on if you be not true and made her no hush that song. For the years that are coming swift to you bear a dearer love along. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Ship by Marion Longfellow. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. My Ship. One day I cast my lot upon the troublous tides of life and ventured all my hoarded love upon its fitful strife on one frail mortal like myself i set a store of years and freighted well the ship that day with all my hopes and fears with all my hopes for fears were not upon that happy day and never sign of cloud uprose above my sunlit way ah me can life ever bring again such perfect trust as this such eager hopes such joyous dreams of ever-present bliss my ship sailed forth to many a storm she bared her gallant breast and still she sails the wide wide seas but never finding rest one day ah me tis years ago since first i saw her sail and sent my prayers and tears for her above the gathering gale will she come back my noble ship and captain brave and crew of joys and hopes and high resolves of love both deep and true or oh, solemn thought shall she never find the haven here below but anchor in the silent land beyond life's ebb and flow beyond vain fret and fond regard and strivings ever to see the reason why so oft denied our dearest hopes should be end of poem this recording is in the public domain An Old Song by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia An Old Song Drink to me only with thine eyes, and I will pledge with mine. I read in this old song anew this living love of thine. The old, old song that in the days now swift and sure are fled recalls its sparkle and its mirth oblivious of its dead. It served to bear as lover's gift all tender thought and true it wove among the garlands sweet red roses never rue drink to me only with thine eyes ay with thy tender eyes and read in mine half veiled from thee my own heart's sweet surprise and i will pledge with mine dear love yea pledge a thousandfold the hours of life that thou alone in memory shalt unfold only within thy dark grave eyes would i be mirrored now and only from thy folded lips learn love's own cherished vow drink to me only with thine eyes and i will pledge with mine while overhead above life's stream shines out love's star divine and life no more is dark and drear and storms no more may break where love's own glorious light shines forth and bids the heart awake end of poem this recording is in the public domain to miss h wearing a rose by marion longfellow read for librivox dot org by sonia to miss h wearing a rose may thirteenth eighteen ninety o oh, happy rose that bloometh upon her gentle breast of all thy joyous hours this is in truth the best not sweeter is thy fragrance upon the balmy air than her pure spirit sheddeth so blithe and debonair o happy rose that lieth upon that bosom white 
to thee kind fate hath granted a goal of pure delight in vain i sigh and murmur thy lot all envious view and seek in vain to stifle this moment's pungent rue o oh, happy rose as lying beneath her light caress now whisper to her softly what i may not confess and tell her she is fairer than bloom of earth to-night in that her soul exhaleth all virtues pure and bright end of poem this recording is in the public domain the cloud by marion longfellow read for librivox dot org by sonia the cloud a cloud scarce larger than a feather uprose in love's bright sky one day but ah it grew to stormy weather and shrouded all the sun's bright ray a little cloud but ah the sorrow that springs from bitter words that jar how deep the pain from which we borrow how strong the wall that forms the bar we may in after hours grow tender and strive to read our lives aright but if to love its due we render we know life's thread at best is slight what if the look the word but spoken had been the last we ever met ah life had been too short too broken its pang forever to forget end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sehnsucht by Marion Longfellow, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Sehnsucht. My heart grows faint with longing and with love, as in the twilight comes thy well loved face, and closer, closer drawn by threads that bind thee to me, all our tender joys I trace. In lines keen cut and lasting as the stone, when sculptor's art transforms it into life that erst were soulless marble still and poor to mirror forth our hope or joy or strife in lines keen cut yea on my living heart that slumbered neath its veil of seeming death thou tracest characters full bold and deep and breathest now with life inspiring breath thus was love born to me who deemed it cast behind me with the shadows and the blight that fell on trusting heart and life and home and wrapped my soul in darkest tones of night nay but thy love has waked me and i live for love and life twin born are guests of mine thine eyes have told me lovers sweetest tale and tender lips have sealed me wholly thine so if within the hours apart we walk oft times in paths that take us from our nest the nest we build with loving heart and hands it takes not from us love nor trust nor rest it takes them not no hand but ours can rob each other of this gift surpassing all no hand but ours can bind or break this bond and from no other hand but ours can fall blight or distrust or grief or bitter pain and so my own in this we build it well if through life's storm or sunshine there shall fall no grief or loss our lips may ever tell my heart grows faint with longing and with love and yet i know i must not keep thee ever a tender bond-slave to my amorous will such chain as that twere ill that thou shouldst wear i would not have thee swayed dear love by aught thy manhood would disclaim nor would i hold thee prisoner to my clinging heart however its pleading touch would seek to thee enfold love cannot live where faith and trust are not love will not brook a gilded chain to wear and where the fetters bind the bird's sweet song is hushed the skies above no more are fair but i would hold thee in my heart of hearts so little prisoner that thou never shouldst stray from love's dear shrine but through the waning years our love life should grow dearer day by day end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Selection by Marion Longfellow. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Selection. Yes, hold me closer, closer in thy arms, and closer to thy beating heart, that I, secure in all that crowns a woman's lot, may now with thee the bitter past defy. Yet would I not call down an envious doom on any of the future's sunny days. Twere ill in me to tempt the fates, I trow, but rather, as one pleading, kneels and prays, Stay but thy hand, O time, and pitying grant us of thy sunny sheaves of harvest day, ours brimmed with sweetness and all glad with love, that, passing on, we scarce may heed the way, that erst was strewn with sharpest stone and weeds, so lead us gently, time, we may not miss aught of life's joy or of its brilliant light or missing crave a fuller cup than this yes hold me closer closer let me rest my head content above thy throbbing heart struggle and bay of laurel are the world's but this my own dear love the better part fame and ambition lo do not they burn with all the lurid light and gleam of earth love silent and benign an influence sheds and heralds forth in life a higher birth vain is ambition yea or conquered goal to bind my heart or satisfy me here then hold me closer closer to thee love for this i give it all hold thou me near End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Mansion That Endured by Marion Longfellow. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Mansion That Endured. This legend in prose I found in a French collection and have believed it would be acceptable rendered into verse. M. L back in olden time when emperors ruled the land where tiber flows proud and stern dwelt gondophorus as the ancient legend shows as he mused in hours of leisure came into his brain this thought straight i'll build for mine own glory here a palace deftly wrought of the richest gold and silver with the choicest gems bedecked that shall on my house and lineage still a greater light reflect shall outshine the roman emperors in its beauty and its worth place forever his lordly structure mid the lesser of the earth so he sent his message speeding to the regions far and near that some great and cunning builder might at his command appear when one day with mien all lowly wrapped about in garments grey stood the architect before him his behest to now essay spoke his will and gondophorus went forth proudly unto war days and months sped on unheeded still no word came from afar yet the architect wrought silent though he touched nor plan nor pen for the palace he was building was not seen by eyes of men while unto the poor and wretched freely of the gold he gave precious stones were turned to healing needs of poor humanity back returning flushed with victory gondophorus came apace sought in vain to view his palace bare and empty was its place then he sent with sternest message for the architect and said caitiff what is now thy showing answer by thy hoary head thomas he who doubting lingered when his fellows pressed to claim as their risen lord the saviour spake o thou of kingly name lo thy house is even builded but the warrior bade them cast in deep dungeon him who trifled with his will there bind him fast while he planned the subtlest torment for the traitor's aged frame while he doomed with keenest vengeance him to torture death and shame but as in his rage he pondered sleep overtook him held him chained 
and a vision hovered near him earthly sense grew dim and waned then the spirit of his brother swiftly to his side drew nigh said in words that thrilled his being he whom thou hast doomed to die is the servant of the mighty is an instrument of grace for the angels now have shown me where no narrow walls have place and where dwell the hosts eternal reared in all its beauty there lo a house of precious jewels and of ornament most fair fashioned of the precious metals thou wouldst fain have builded here fashioned with a grace and glory that on earth doth not appear thus in paradise there standeth waiting thee a house divine which the architect hath fashioned all on earth to now outshine then the vision paled and vanished gone the forest straightway sped to the captive who awaiting bowed in prayer his aged head gone the forest knelt before him then the holy thomas spoke as he raised the humble warrior crushed beneath the vision's stroke knowest not o king the mansions that endure are reared on high build it there for us in heaven by our faith and charity end of poem this recording is in the public domain francis coster's story by marion longfellow read for librivox dot org by larry wilson i came across this legend and prose some time ago to which was prefixed this note the following exquisite story was written by anthony of siena and translated from the dominican records by francis coster a famous preacher of the sixteenth century mr gould author of mysteries of the middle ages has succeeded in rendering it into current english in rendering the story into verse i have kept to the text as closely as possible m l once i read an olden story lived a holy man of god and two children neath his guidance through life's pitfalls safely trod every day's returning duties found them docile at his side there to draw from wisdom's fountain all his tender care supplied but the day's first freshest hour at the altar found them prone gladly giving to their saviour all he claimeth as his own there they served with purest offering at the sacrifice sublime knelt responded and with reverence sounded off the bell's clear chime and this duty then completed to the little chapel door turned their feet and entering vanished there to eat their humble store but one day their teacher seeking spake the elder one full clear tell us father what fair infant doth so oft to us appear then the priest replied in accents full of tender loving care son i know not him you speak of who with thee thy task doth share but they came again unto him day by day with urgent word and it was with deepest wonder that their simple tale he heard and he asked of what sort is he and they answered him again father he is clad in raiment seamless and without a stain but whence cometh he replying spoke the priest in accents mild and they answered from the altar as it were descends the child and we asked him there to share with us of our milk and bread and he doth right willingly this is what the children said and the priest was full of wonder to the children then spake he are there marks whereby to know him if mine eyes the child should see yes my father yes he beareth in his hands and in his feet wounds that pierce his tender body these the words that they repeat from his hands the crimson liquid on the bread he taketh flows till neath his touch it blusheth like the deep heart of the rose then with awe replied the master o oh, my sons list unto me 
no it is the sweet child jesus the holy one that you did see when again he cometh to you with these words your greeting be thou hast breakfasted with us grant we thee may sup with thee then the children did his bidding sweetly then the child did say be it so on thursday next be it on ascension day on that day they came rejoicing but they brought nor milk nor bread served they at mass right gladly pax phobiscum then was said but they still knelt on unheeding thus they fell in christ asleep master children with their saviour then his marriage feast did keep end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Chimes by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person The Chimes On fair Lake Como's sunny brink An ancient monastery stood Close to the mountain's steep ascent As nestling neath its snowy hood And there a pale young artisan His cunning plied a wondrous chime He sought to frame that those who loved The beauty of that molten rhyme Within the valley's breadth should hear Feeling at morn and even clear for years he told, content if he at last might frame a chime so sweet that pilgrims oft would silent pause to hear the music glad repeat, borne over the tranquil water's reach and bringing swift unto the heart its tones of warning, praise and love that never more should then depart. Such was the thought he wove and prayed that his life's work be wholly made. The day came when that perfect chime was placed aloft, its song to wing forth over the water's silent reach and to the convent's ruth to bring the lost and wayworn traveller from the busy haunts of world and strife back where the calm of prayer might prove the guide-post to eternal life then was the artisan as one whose dearest life-work here was done not so however twas yet to be a lifelong task a path to lead through many a land in futile search over stony ways where feet should bleed not yet his soul's high good and find the prize's hands had placed aloft how rarely here on earth we see life's morning fill its promise soft not yet was he to find his rest beside lake como's lovely breast a savage horde overran the land and bore away the prized chime afar from peaceful como's side to some unknown and distant clime in vain the artisan complained beneath a fate unkind he drew no comfort from lamental prayer for peace no more his hearthstone knew then as one day he brooding mused and consolation sweet refused he seemed to see before his eyes a land outspread wherein his feet should wander seeking ever there his loved and lost his chime so sweet he rose at once he sought no aid but bowed his head in silent prayer then from his home he straightway passed that no one might his purpose share and leaving home and rest that day with breaking heart went on his way whenever he heard in foreign land some wondrous story of a chime whose tones were liquid notes of song, whose bells rang out a gladsome rhyme. He journeyed to that storied place, nor paused till he should reach the spot, only to find his quest in vain, while yet those bells were never forgot. Each day his soul went up in prayer that those clear chimes might pierce the air. Thus journeyed he for many a year, where locks of gold had turned to grey, till in a distant land he strayed and heard it close of summer day. The old sweet song rung by his chime, how long had listened for in vain quickly rose tears in lifted eyes quickly his heart renounced its pain o oh, loved and lost for many a day you've called me from my youth away for now on foreign strand he waits alone in age alone in kin listening is listen one who bides outside of heaven to praise within not vain his search not lost his love he feels once more the old time throb ere cruel foes his prize had taken no more may they his treasure rob his life went forth in one glad cry beneath that far-off alien sky twas ended all the tender search the hours of pain and sleepless toil there where no love his hand might clasp there on that wild and foreign soil but deep within his heart was writ his purpose pure his steadfast search and lo his chime still calls to prayer and still peals forth from ivy church the bells once blessed by saintly hands now call in limerick God's commands.
My story's done, what need to say? He sleeps as well and sweetly there, Beneath that arch of foreign sky, As in his native land so fair. He found ere death had met his feet, The prize he sought was spirit brave, And finding was content to lie, Afar from Como in his grave. Love was the goal that led his feet, To peace and deathless calm replete. The chimes? Ah well, perhaps they peal, No less so sweetly that their note, In alien lands the tidings bring, They still to God, their praise devote, and though their maker no more hears the liquid music of each tone, they speak to those whose living needs make off the chimes their very own. The hand that made is turned to clay, his work the chimes live on or way. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Cemetery by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Libby Marie Lennon, February 27, 2017. Lo, halfway up the hill I pause to turn within the ancient gate and enter ground now hallowed, the silent city where they wait in perfect rest till he shall bid them rise who now in sleep are laid, whose life and death and waiting in on him in childlike faith is stayed. No sound is heard within the spot, save the soft wind among the trees, or song of insects busy hum, or low of herd upon the breeze. I walk mid graves of those long dead, who lived and suffered, strove and won, and now have entered into life, e'en while we say their life is done. I fain would take, when I return into the world's wild rush and roar, the peace of this fair autumn day, that it bide with me evermore, that I may learn from this blessed spot where sleep the dead who in the Lord now take their rest, that life is more than idle jest, than passing word, than anxious effort for the bread that perisheth, yea, more, that life is a vessel given of precious ointment, that we bear and fear that we its freight may waste ere we may yield it to his care. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lines on Immortality by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Libby Marie Lennon February 27, 2017 poor trembling soul within this frame of clay that vainly questioneth wouldst fain assay the problem that nor time nor man may solve around which cycles evermore revolve not till the light upon thy quest is born that only beams in an immortal morn shalt thou be satisfied thy fears allayed and freed from earth a new creation made end of poem this recording is in the public domain. A Dream by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Libby Marie Lennon February 27, 2017 I dreamed, and lo, upon the silent earth That ever swings as from its misty birth I kinless stood in all the streams that erst in joyous measure sang me forth, their tale sank to a murmur, even while there burst upon mine eyes that straightway turned me pale. I looked and wondered, and I grew as chill as though their faded touch had froze my blood, as far beyond that living green-clad hill, in breathless awe mine eyes were turned, I stood appalled. Forth from the bosom of the deep there rose a wondrous chain of towering cliffs, clear as the lake upon whose mirror sleep light poised, all tenderly the skiffs, while rays of light played o'er their polished sides as slowly rose and sank they on the tides. Kissed by the sun they grew, their colors sheen of rose and emerald touch tips, between the amethyst deepened to a royal tone of purple, and I stood and gazed alone. I knew that naught of earth was left save me to look upon that strange and glorious sea, and as I gazed, wild flames leapt up to seize the iceberg's glow and melt it to their will, 
Naught could their hungry rage of greed appease, While luridly and sullen burned they still. What then does it portray, this onslaught fierce of flames Upon these sunlit cliffs of ice, if it be not that evil seeks to pierce the armor thrown about the soul's device, the powers that wage unceasing war and ever seek to gain what lies afar above them. Souls of just men, perfect made, yield not, I cried, for here a mortal stands alone and helpless in these alien lands, and yet on mortal lips I know is laid the burden of a knowledge far above all thought of human gain or human love, and crying thus I woke, nor ever knew if to fruition my bright vision grew. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On Empyrean Heights by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by recording person On Empyrean Heights Read at Hardman Hall, New York City, before the International League of Press Clubs, June the 3rd, 1897. I stood on Empyrean Heights and saw, outlined in figures bold, a vision there, loud with the shouts of strife and deadly war, while peace remote shone in her beauty fair. I heard the clash of arms, the martial tread, while nation warred with nation in their lust, of pride and power until there lay the dead the heroes of a decade, in the dust. I saw in ranks that spread to either pole, heroic deeds of great men and of true, the highest aspirations of the soul, the work wrought through the many by the few. I sped from rising sun unto the west, I read the stars that mirrored in the sky, and some in a resplendent light were dressed, and some through shadow I could scarce descry. I saw a nation's rise and saw its fall, I learned the people's passing glory there. I heard the strident voice of justice call, an answering cheer and joy were in the air. I passed through touching scenes of humble life, where hearts were beating in their full content, where far from peaceful hearth and home lay strife, and days of joy and gaiety were spent. I passed mid scenes of dark and dull despair, on, on, where bitter want and hunger raged, where naught of holiness was pictured there, but man against man, his cruel warfare waged. I heard the wail of childhood in its need, and saw the fearful shadow of death's wing, pass swiftly on and through the darkness speed, and heard the joyous song the angels sing. I heard the deeds of woe, saw sins of ill, I knew life's tragedy was played the while, that greed of gain, that selfish, restless will, was crushing out the tender youth's sweet smile. I also read of good and saw its scope, of radiance on a troubled world's dark web, and saw that trust and love and buoyant hope outrode the springtime tide ere it could ebb. Nay, tell me then, whence came each passing scene, and why such widespread power vouchsafed to me, that time nor space held aught of bar between, the shifting lights of land and distant sea? How could I realise the utmost span of life and love, nay more, of silent death, as meted out within the time of man, and passing over the wide world's pulsing breath. A puissant press, what need have I to tell, the power of thy great sceptre wielded here, when those beneath whose brilliant magic spell, with sad entranced, now in our midst appear, each face familiar warms the brother's heart, each hand extended meets an earnest clasp, each friend is here a living, sentient part, of brotherhood, and seeks an honest grasp. O mighty power for good or yet for ill, for saving grace, mayhap for withering blight. Thy brimming cup of service should be still, the draught to lift the weary world to light. Thy arm should raise to be in noble strife, thy steady hands still wield the trenchant pen. The soul of light and grace and noble life shall call thee forth from hearts of fellow men. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Little While, March 14th, 1889, by Marian Longfellow, sung for LibriVox.org by Ezwa, in Belgium, in May 2017. A little while, my friends, and I am lying, 
beneath the sod that tells us spring is nigh and i who found this life no rest supplying shall lay my task aside without a sigh a little while and friends who kindly greet me shall seek my place in tears shall seek in vain and those whose love and tender thoughts now meet me shall say she comes a friend no more again a little while and oh how great the yearning to lay the burden down to be as free as bird that hails its nest on wing returning so do i think beloved of rest and thee the rest my weary heart and soul have waited through all these years of sorrow and of doubt as traveller on his homeward way belated impatience seeks and cannot bide without and the old loved one gone this year before me unto a world of light and rapture pure the thought of thee doth smiling now allure me to draw more close and yet to more endure end of poem this recording is in the public domain reverie by marian longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. O'er the long reach of water comes the plash of dipping oar, and faintly, borne upon the wind, far voices gain the shore. I hear their low, faint murmur as the boat glides on its way, and with a glance of flashing oar fall silver drops of spray. I lie with half closed eyes and dream of days that long are fled while fancy brings unto my side the forms of those now dead when life and love were as a song from vibrant chords of youth when every heart that greeted me spoke but of trust and truth thus half a dream i hold commune with mine own heart and ask were youth and joy the greater gain or life's more finished task quick comes the answer to my lips quick to the question craved the noblest deeds of life are those in later years engraved on tablets of the living mind and characters full bold not happiness nor yet content can hear life's measure hold not to glide on in summer dreams nor yet to love is best but in thy noble strength to grow and earn the longed for rest so not with envious eyes i watch the boat whose living freight is youth and all youth's sunny dreams i who have learned to wait end of poem this recording is in the public domain heimve by marian longfellow read for LibriVox.org by nemo o oh, heart of mine why sighest for joys thou mayst not taste O oh, eyes, why turn in longing Across the weary waste, In lips that falter sadly Of home and love and peace, Now all thy vain repining And doubt and grief, O oh, cease. Home, nay, thy home is distant, Will longing bring it near, And heart, will thy complaining Point out the way more clear? O heart of mine, thou sighest, in vain, thy home's afar. It shineth as a beacon, to exile as a star. Unto the lonely sailor, who dreams of land and love, but as he dreams looks ever, unto his star above. Then, heart, bind to thy longing, the gaze that turns aloft, beyond the raging tempest, to seek love's guidance oft. I'm they, O homesick sailor, 
across life's stormy main return unto thy haven no more to roam again end of poem this recording is in the public domain grand manon by marion longfellow read for LibriVox.org by recording person grand manon over the wild reach of wave afar thy cliffs arise once more i turn mine eyes upon thy hills and purple tinted shore o silent in majestic state monarch of mighty realm thy front is raised to meet the storm when fierce gales overwhelm yet on this lovely autumn day in soft enchantment's chain outlined forever on distant sky thy memory shall remain my feet must tread in other paths than this beloved land and other footprints in their turn shall press this shining sand see air and sky are filled alike with beauty and delight the sea is shimmering at my feet with all of life and light so let me bear to other scenes this picture it shall say as memory and as joy to me through many a weary day and off shall rise before my sight when distance time and care have touched my life with graver thought this vision passing fair end of poem this recording is in the public domain Madeleine, 1891, by Marian Longfellow, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa, in Belgium, in May 2017. I see her passing through the fields, all fresh with daisies and with rye, and something purer, brighter breathes than the mid-tints of earth and sky her dainty head with grace is poised and neath her head brims shade i see the soft dark eyes the pure child face that holds so much of joy for me her feet as loath to tread the bloom of flowers and of field grass bright for lightly as she maketh way to pass nor leave behind her blight fearless the eyes and full of thought as though life's secret faint she'd know grace of her wildness all untrained wraps her within its subtle glow and as she treads her way afield i know she seeks me me alone oh child my heart grows weak to-night to stifle now its secret moan what will ye bring her love and life or what withhold i may not see but oh i pray whate'er ye take leave her her grace and purity End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Where the Shadows Play by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Christina Where the long reach of shadows play And placid waters murmur by I dream throughout the summer day Nor know the hours that winged fly Hushed is the voice of sordid trade and e'en the bird's sweet song is still while all the cares that life hath made slip from my heart which now is filled with peace alone o nature pure to thee i turn no more to stray than spirit with thee ever sure to find sweet solace for the day o leafy homes where songbirds rest o gentle breeze that rocks and sways my heart all silent stays to rest and bide apart these heaven-born days for other worlds are pictured there reflected in the waters lie and each is clear and passing fair 
and fleecy clouds o'er each glide by. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Valentine by Marion Longfellow, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Years have sped by with rapid wings since those bright days of long ago, when hand in hand in life's sweet spring we told our love in accents low. For you were young and fair and free, and I a youth with ardor bold. You were of all earth's maids to me the fairest of the stories old. Our youthful fancy in the years that now lie far behind, a new springs forth from memory's time endears, while smiles were frequent, tears were few. Ah, well, we parted, still doth shine your form on fancy's pictured wall, and when you were my valentine, and I to you was all in all. I see you on the busy street, a comely matron, fair of face, the maiden tall and pale and sweet keeps by your side with even pace you see her not nay she is mine this gracious presence from the past she is my one fair valentine through summer's glow through winter's blast end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Martins by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Slowly sinks the sun. The evening takes from night a deeper tone. Birds on restless wing are wheeling with a grace and strength their own. Martins, how your note reminds me of the days so long ago, in the time when care or sorrow ne'er had touched me with their woe. Back your song this evening takes me back within the golden past and i seem to see the village and the spell of yore is cast once again about my spirit memory brings before my view friends and faces long since vanished sounds and scenes that once i knew till the sea-girt town uprises from the mist in verdure dressed born is jewel in its setting on the grand old ocean's breast o'er the waves the bell sounds clearly with its call to evening prayer and the martins wheel and circle now with swift wing through the air so i muse while twilight summons once again the long ago and its clustered memories fill my brooding heart in overflow youth and love and hope a weary in these years have grown and i walk a faint in life's rough pathway where erstwhile my feet did fly. But I think when Azrael greets me, I would fain the hour were mine, twixt the sunset and the even, at the summer day's decline. So the martins through the ether in their graceful flight should be, like the harbingers of freedom, to the soul from earth set free. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Never Again by Marian Longfellow, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in May 2017. Leave me alone to my sorrow, my sorrow. Leave me alone, I would mourn my dead. Never again. On the morrow he greet me, never again, it is sad, it is sad. Never again shall I see him approaching, hear his clear voice ring over the lea. Never again shall his strong arm enfold me, never again, ah, woe is me. Never again, oh, the weight of this anguish, never to see him, to hear him again. 
Only my heart to my heart can disclose it. Never, ah, oh, never, this quivering pain. Never again will he wait neath my window, bidding me join him as loving he stands. Never to watch for his coming to meet me over the sea from those distant lands dark are his eyes as is the veiled splendor of tropical skies in storm overcast glorious he smile as the sunlight descending full on the earth when that tempest is past now in the land of his birth though he wander neath southern palms though his footsteps rove ever i know in its pain and its longing turns his heart's trust unto mine's deathless love leave me alone to my sorrow my sorrow leave me alone with life's dreary refrain never again shall i hear his fond pleading listening i hear only never again we are severed by more than the ocean's vast billows we must walk in our paths each alone and in pain but our hearts grow but closer and fonder and nearer though here upon earth it be never again end of poem this recording is in the public domain hadst thou denied by marion longfellow read for librivox dot org by sonia hadst thou denied so many things dear lord i asked so many things that were untried so many things i sought but oh hadst thou denied hadst thou denied i did not know their gold was dross i did not see the chasm wide but downward plunged and now i cry hadst thou denied hadst thou denied so many things with outstretched hands i begged might not be turned aside i know the best had oft been mine hadst thou denied hadst thou denied i wearied thee with my wild prayers to taste of joys that never abide while many blessings had been mine hadst thou denied hadst thou denied hadst thou denied my foolish wish hadst thou my spirit longer tried all these vain years in grief i own had reaped rich gain hadst thou denied end of poem this recording is in the public domain why should i remember if you forget by marion longfellow read for librivox.org by mihai borobocha why should i remember the days of long ago days we spent together beside the river's flow why should i remember the dreams that haunt me yet ah why should i remember if you forget why should i remember the nights i sat and dreamed as stars came out in heaven when they and i it seemed alone kept watch and vigil ah i recall them yet but why should i remember if you forget why should i remember those days of summer time 
when love immortal bound me and sang his witching rhyme. Why should I remember your vows as there we met? Ah, why should I remember, if you forget? Why should I remember the grave I fashioned wide within my heart and laid you and all that with you died? Why should I bewail you and why should it be yet that I must still remember and you forget? Why has my heart grown empty and why this empty throne where you who made life dear have left me now alone? Why can I not a watch against your memory set? Ah, why should I remember when you forget? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To H N T by Marian Longfellow, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. To H N T, January twenty eighth, eighteen eighty five. Dear heart, sweet heart, that through these years hast walked with me in sun in shade though thy dear presence bides with me in thought alone that never shall fade we may not wander hand in hand we seldom greet us face to face yet in my life thy love thy words have ever yet a hallowed place together in the past we roamed when girlhood's fancies bound our will to-day no less we deem it sweet the tie that holds us captive still to thee beloved my storm-tossed heart turns now as then for word of cheer in those far days my arm was strong my love did hold thee from all fear but now my strength is well nigh spent though memory crowns each happy hour and fain would forms now vanished seek and fain recall that witching power some sleep in death whom we call dear some roam afar in distant lands while you and i have ever grown the nearer knit by friendship's bands and as the years roll on i cling dear heart more closely to thy love god grant for all life's bitterness a lasting peace to come above end of poem this recording is in the public domain And They Shall Rise Again by Marian Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia And They Shall Rise Again And they shall rise again, O oh, words of comfort given To many hearts by sorrow born unto the earth. And they shall rise again, The gates of death are riven, And forth immortal steps the soul unto her birth long had they lain in vast nepenthe's hidden coffers the germs of life that silent waited but the call of love divine to seize upon the gift it proffers and to throw back and off forever the dark pall and they shall rise again arise to glory's bounding no earth-born vision and no span of fleeting days but born of depth which life thus far hath been but sounding the airs of heaven's crown and its immortal praise and they shall rise again o joys of hope eternal that though we weeping lay them neath the heavy sod god's angels guarding now behold their springs supernal and hold them trusting waiting but the call of god so shall this easter morn to-day bring to us waiting his word fulfilled his gift of gifts above all price for earth and light and air are all to us relating the glories born at dawn from shores of paradise end of poem this recording is in the public domain mine onward path by marion longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson And so I take mine onward path alone, And yet not quite alone, if God decree. The way my Lord hath trod shall be mine own, 
and so my strength shall be what though it lead through tangled brake and briar and sharpest stones shall pierce my wounded feet unto that height if my faint soul aspire these words mine ear might greet if thou but follow me through toil and pain if thou but take thy cross and follow me i will reward thee when i come again for all eternity but if thou wilt not bear thy cross with me thou canst not hope to win the victor's prize no martyr's crown no saint's green palm shall be thy share in paradise and so i fain would take mine onward way in humble imitation of my lord this hope to be bear me in it day by day his never failing word end of poem this recording is in the public domain after many days by marion longfellow read for librivox dot org by sonia after many days calm seas upon whose placid breast my bark one day shall anchored lie beyond this season's keen unrest beneath a softened evening sky i shall not in those hours of peace recount the storms that strike me now for me the struggle sore shall cease and trust stand at my vessel's prow the shipwreck and the storm no more may toss me neath its stern decree but anchored within sight of shore a perfect rest shall welcome me i shall not count the tears that flow these weary hours these restless days for then my keener sight shall know the hidden meaning of his ways and thus i look beyond the storm beyond the clouds that now appear knowing the ills that take such form shall flee before the evening clear calm seas upon whose placid breast my bark one day shall anchored lie my soul may not possess thy rest until the evening draweth nigh end of poem this recording is in the public domain Some Day by Marian Longfellow, read for LibriVox.org by Christina. Some day when all this weary time no more hath power to stay my fly, when far from earth and happy clime my soul shall speed her way to lie, I shall no more this garb of clay beneath whose way I sink oppressed. Bear with me, but oh, blessed day, find all denied in life of rest some day ah how my heart doth cry with longing and with pain aloud for some faint sign lest hope should die for some small token through the cloud lest joy no more my guest should be and peace that calms with tender touch no more should come to visit me who need their presence here so much some day nay do i not know well this life bears little in its hand that we should lie as in a spell beneath its strong and cruel band at best tis but a span dealt out to each as grains of sand may seem that as the tempest whirls about are gone and ended as a dream end of poem this recording is in the public domain lake winnipesaukee by marion longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Twilight O fair broad lake upon whose breast The shifting shadows rise and fall, Thy surging waters vague unrest Sinks beneath twilight's gathering pall. Thy changing beauties quickly glide Successive past the entranced eye, While hills around in regal pride Reflected in thy waters lie i hear the plash of dipping oar i see the boats swing on their way the waves flow on from shore to shore while softly slowly dies the day and sweetly with the evening's calm upon my heart there falls a peace that comes as comes the evening psalm that bids the world's vain tumult cease and as fall swift the shades of night along the path my feet must tread lo through the clouds a golden light upon life's passing scene is shed and so bathed in its softened glow and tuned to sweetest harmonies far far beyond life's ebb and flow 
the soul immortal seeks the skies end of poem this recording is in the public domain jesus of nazareth passeth by by marion longfellow read for librivox dot org by larry wilson o storm-tossed soul in thine hour of need turn to the light ere the moments fly turn unto one who will ever heed jesus of nazareth passeth by hark what mean these songs of praise and clouds of incense that float on high see borne on wings on this day of days jesus of nazareth passeth by if thou but touch his garments him as they did of old if thou wouldst not die lo from his person as unto them healing and love flow silently into each heart he entereth now listeneth unto each sinner's cry then leaving his blessing upon each brow jesus of nazareth passeth by joy that we sat at his blessed feet joy that he hears e'en the faintest sigh loudly our lips exultant repeat jesus of nazareth passeth by end of poem this recording is in the public domain nearer my rest by marion longfellow read for librivox dot org by larry wilson nearer my rest with each succeeding day that bears me still mine own allotted task nearer my rest the clouds roll swift away and naught remains o lord for me to ask if i but bear unflinchingly life's pain and humbly lay it at thy feet divine then shall i see each loss a hidden gain and thy sweet mercy through the darkness shine nearer my rest and as i journey on grant me dear lord my angel guides to be to keep and help me ere that rest be won patience and faith and blessed purity these guides i pray thee each thine attribute and thou o lord my shield and armor bright for without thee no tree shall bear good fruit these three o lord to lead me through the night end of poem this recording is in the public domain so many years by marion longfellow read for librivox dot org by larry wilson these hands have labored lord so many years so many years these feet have trod this road so many years these shoulders bent and weak have borne their own and others heavy load this heart is broken in these many years and tears have dimmed these eyes till life has seemed but one sad wilderness and few the hours of peace amidst the bitter strife must i then lord toil on unceasing here hast thou no words of comfort for my soul are all the cheerless fainting hours to win no progress toward my weary spirit's goal nay as i speak i know the day will dawn from out the dark and tempest-driven night when i released shall stand erect and free within the glory of that radiant light no more then heart be well these hours of earth no more shed tears of blood for surely there beyond the darkness and the pain and gloom shines forth the sun in lands that are most fair end of poem this recording is in the public domain sorrow by marion longfellow read for librivox .org by christina i wore a jewel my breast nor knew till late that it was such oft has it robbed me of my rest oft have i shivered at its touch i wore it trembling and i knew nor why it was in fact nor how its presence felt like evening dew on shrinking heart and lip and brow it was a thing of pain and yet a subtile blessing seemed to flow from neath its touch though eyes were wet as from the stab of ruthless foe not until ears had fled did i behold the inner presence there not until time had passed all by 
did I perceive its beauty rare. But now I know thee as thou art, O face divine that lookest down upon my life and bruised heart, and fear of thee for ever hath flown. Thou shalt walk with me, as I know, for the brief space of years to be, a newer, higher path to show, where sorrow wins me purity. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Unknown by Marion Longfellow. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. A day whose wondrous dawn is writ in letters firm and free and bold, through years whose prophecy shall fit the stone from life's mosaic old. A day wherein my hand shall rest from labor ill requited here. The hands whose clasp on peace hath pressed to light to hold it very near. That day whose numbers oft times now rolls past each year but all unseen by eyes now holden shades the brow where other shades have frequent been some token in each joyous year that most i loved abides unseen and bears aloft an index clear upon its leaves now clasped between the month the day the hour is there unconscious to my searching eye when be the skies or dark or fair shall added be the year i die and as i note each feast of song on earth each joy each loss or birth shall i not give nor thus be wrong a thought to that when clogging earth shall hold me bond slaved here no more no more shall dim with tears mine eyes when i shall simply pass the door no living hand impatient tries not mine to know that day as yet but in the watches of the night the watch my soul herself hath set i wait the coming of that light not then as messenger of dread i wait to read it on the scroll not as impatient nor as wed to life abides my waiting soul though now inscribed unknown it takes its place on calendar of earth an anniversary that wakes to greet us from the hour of birth end of poem this recording is in the public domain Our Birthright by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Our Birthright God of the nations, thou whose might Hath led us from the dark to light, Since first a puny people we Sought and obtained our liberty. Grant, we beseech thee, for the earth A peace that shall have noble birth, A peace that shall beneath its wings Enfold the brightest, best of things keep thou the people of that land who for their homes and firesides stand teach thou another land to rest her arms and bend her haughty crest bring thou within the fold of right all who are plagued with war and blight and bring o god in this new year a reign of love and not of fear so shall we keep thy word divine so shall the land no more repine and this wide world, oppressed with fear, look onward to a brighter year. God of the nations, thou whose might hath led us from the dark to light, grant us to live that we may be worthy our birthright, liberty. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lexington by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox org by Todd April 19, 1775 We name our heroes in the hush That follows battle's awful roar, And count the cost of that great rush To victory. They deemed no more Than just the simple right to shed Their blood in such a holy cause. Where the unconquered died or bled, we turn from our safe ground and pause to wonder how in days long gone such power was given to right the wrong we deem them worthy of all praise the heroes of that battlefield and looking backward to those days that meed of praise most gladly yield were they more true to dictates bold of honor in that olden time or when the weight of proof is told rang out the truth in purer chime 
Gave them more freely of life's stream than we would do, than we dare dream? They did not flinch when in the wage of war stern duty's standard waved, but heart and hand did both engage, and on each soul was deep engraved country and home, fit words to urge to action more heroic still, as o'er that mighty ocean surge rang out the watchword of their will, as onward pressed to liberty the men through whom we now are free. In conflict rang their cry of might, Ours is the cause that must be won, God is the helper of that right. So sped the word at Lexington, While hurrying from peaceful plough To war's red-stained field they came, Not theirs neath tyranny to bow, Not theirs a country's death and shame, But to go on to greater height, With wings outspread for purer flight. Hail heroes in our country's need, We bring ye wreaths of laurel leaves, we gather of the scattered seed in full and ripened harvest sheaves. Yours be it e'er to lift our minds to realms of higher deed and thought. Be ours to loose what here but binds and holds us from the objects sought, that may we hope in time to stand as staunch and true as that brave band. Today, as meet, we hold this page of history before the world, while overhead, undimmed by age, our country's flag is all unfurled. O emblem of sweet freedom's gift, not vainly are thy stars displayed. To thee our eyes with pride we lift. Thy stars and stripes our strength have made. Hail, heroes of brave deeds well done. Hail, day that gave us Lexington. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. O land of our birth. By Marion Longfellow, read for LibriVox by Todd. O land of our birth, whose bright colors are waving from mountain and valley, o'er sea and o'er land, a pathway of light, lo, its glory is paving, to wane not nor darken at despot's command. We stand neath the flag that embodies the Union, while history passes in stirring review. Our hearts, in remembrance, now hold proud communion with the record of deeds both gallant and true. O land of our birth, tis a glory undying, that sheds its soft light o'er each scene outspread, and tyranny's hand all in vain is defying the heaven-born peace that to freedom is wed. We feel the glad throb of the patriot's devotion, that heir to the stars and the stripes must be due. All else is engulfed in o'erwhelming emotion, that finds its fulfillment the red, white, and blue. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Our Flag by Marion Longfellow. Read for LibriVox.org by Todd. Dedicated to the Children of America. Fling to the breeze our noble flag and let it ride the gale. In time of war, twill never lag, its stars and stripes near pale. Give it to heaven's breeze once more, and let it proudly float, the emblem bear from shore to shore, to herald freedom's note. Look to it, children, tis a gift, most precious in its worth. No slave his streaming eyes need lift to curse his wretched birth. No deed to bring the blush of shame should flaunt beneath its folds, but ever brighter grow the fame of work its plan unfolds. Look to it, children, let it be as fair to-day as when the founders of our liberty stood forth, God's noblemen. When by the price of blood and tears they sealed that sacred deed, and cast aside all doubts and fears to meet a country's need, then let it float to heaven's breeze beneath the sapphire dome, far o'er the tops of waving trees, for country and for home. Fling to the breeze our noble flag, and let it ride the gale, in time of war twill never lag, its stars and stripes ne'er pale. In time of peace, how fair to see, sent forth by patriot hand, this symbol of sweet liberty throughout our native land. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The National Flower by Marion Longfellow. Read for LibriVox.org. By Todd. The Goldenrod. 
It grows mid tangled underwood, all brilliant in the fields, and o'er our hearts a subtle spell its golden beauty wields. Perchance some exile's foot hath pressed the road with weary tread, when lo, from out the wayside growth it rears its bonny head. Not with the first faint tints of spring are its bright blossoms seen, but radiant in its garb and decked with autumn's fruitful sheen. Then hail, bright floweret of our choice, with multiform design, though many in thy blossom's wealth, still one on parent vine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Roll Muffled Drums by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Todd Arlington, May 30, 1902 Roll, muffled drums, upon the air, And flags furl colors bright, For this is hallowed ground we tread, And here we learn death's might. Our heroes, whose last rest is now Within this silent spot, In lowly tents their bivouac find, Though not by us forgot. Wail well forth, O music, in soft strains, And learn, O soul of man, as down the leafy aisles it throbs, how brief on earth the span of life, and turn from its rude clash and all its weary pain, to muse a while on heroes gone, and hear their praise again. As words of orator now fall upon the listening ear, life grows less close, and death is robbed of much of doubt and fear. For as the burning words go forth upon the balmy wind, Men's thoughts are swayed by tones that sing the glory of mankind. Then, muffled drums, roll on, and flags your brilliant colors furl, for here the dead sleep on, and here no more may warfare hurl its blighting torch, its screaming shell, its horror and its dread. Hark, on the summer wind is born, a requiem for the dead. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Dead Musician by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Dead Musician, Julius Eichberg Hushed is the magic of his touch That waked the soul to joyous praise. The vibrant strain we loved so much Still echoes on throughout the days. Days that had sped in steady round, Thrilled by the songs his bow had bound. Stilled is the music to our ears, In higher cycles, we believe, Brighter than earthly crown appears His genius, and shall meet receive, While in a rarer, fuller light His touch still wakens to delight. Then is he not as one who dies, And whose brief day is ended here, For, in those worlds which time defies, his melody grows still more clear. Then is he not as one whose light is darkened by death's envious night. Thus, while we wear within our thought the beauty of his godlike art, that here in eager longing sought to voice the music in his heart. O oh, bear in mind, no truth divine of art is lost, it needs must shine across the waste of shipwrecked lives as over the brightest path below wherever its meaning steadfast strives to sing its measures stately flow for life is art as art is life and soars above unequalled strife he gave to man the measure free the gods had given to his soul and touched to deeper ecstasy bound music to his sweet control O oh, artist true, we deem thy death but entrance into fuller breath. But fuller grasp of thy great work, but deeper draughts from wells divine, where disappointment never may lurk, where round thy head the glories shine, which crowns endeavor firm and true, and gives thee roses never rue. Here do we leave thee with thy brow encircled with the roses sweet, Victory's token, crowning now thine art with all our praises meet. Here do we leave thee, victor still, for art bends not 
to death's stern will. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Nation Weeps by Marian Longfellow. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. In Memoriam. William McKinley, September 14, 1901. The nation weeps while through the stricken land stalks the grim specter raised by traitor hand, and on the air there rises dire lament for vigil, suffering, and life now spent. Lo, through the tumult comes the voice of trust from soul of mortal triumphing o'er dust. God's will, not ours, O hero strong. To rise above the thought of burning wrong, Dealt by a dastard's hand. O spirit bright, Seeing while here The heavy cross grow light. His will be done, His guiding hand my way, That heart, yet bound by racking pain, could say. The nation weeps, Anger and grief uplift, on high their hands, oh, from this pain to sift some grain of comfort and some thought of rest. Again those tender words, God knoweth best. As man, not free from earthly fault was he, for mortal man may not perfection see. But yet, as man, he bore full well his part, and freely spent his wealth of brain and heart. E'en as we think of him the silent land draws near, and dimly by his bed there stand Lincoln and Garfield, now henceforth to be, with him, a martyr trio grand and free. The nation weeps, O oh, hearts be comforted, he needs no more your words so feebly said. He heeds no more your thoughts of praise or blame, For he hath won for ere a higher fame. Soldier of cross and battlefield, His death hath taught humanity that fleeting breath Of mortal glory, here's but a slender span, And brief, indeed, on earth the life of man. Dear earth, enfold him in your restful arms, and guard him well, though past are all alarms. E'en though, while now at rest, he calmly sleeps, the nation weeps, the stricken nation weeps. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Memoriam by Marion Longfellow Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. In Memoriam, Charles Henshaw Dana. The lilies clustered fair and tall. I stood outside the garden wall. Celia Thaxter. Life's lilies grew along his way, in beauty clad from day to day, while music with her lovely strains led him a captive in her chains, and friends with generous hand and thought unto his fireside greetings brought i would have given my life to be the rose she touched so tenderly so sang the poet and the tone awoke for him sweet strains alone ah earthly love how vain thou art to still the longings of the heart the angel azrael touched his hand and life on earth yields the demand no more he stands outside the gate no more hath need to watch or wait. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.